Okay, so you have learned by examples, those of you that have, have never seen before OpenMP or OpenECC, now you are familiar with the syntax, with some of the fundamental pragmas, some of the fundamental clauses, but there are some additional pragmas and clauses that you can use during the practical. So here I will try to introduce the additional pragmas and clauses that you will be able to will be able to use during the practicals. Okay, parallel. Really nothing else to explain. Remember, parallel is where you define the parallel region. Until that point, single threaded code. After the parallel region, single threaded code again. So at the beginning of the parallel region, threads are created. All of them work in parallel. At the end of the parallel region, all of them are destroyed except for one that continues the single threaded execution. Okay? So this is essentially what we are explaining here. And this is the syntax in C, C++, and in Fortran. So I think that it doesn't make uh, sense to stop more here. Kernels. Kernels is something that is only available in OpenACC. It's not available in OpenMP. We have included this because a common question is, um, what pragma will provide me more, more performance? kernels or parallel. In some sense, both of them specify the beginning and the end of a parallel region. What's the difference? The difference is that in parallel, the one we have been using and the one that we really suggest or recommend to use, you as developers are responsible for use, doing best practice using correctly the pragmas and the clauses. If we don't use them properly, the parallel code that we will create will be incorrect. Okay, it's our responsibility. Kernels is an attempt of OpenACC to release, to get, so that the programmer can get rid of that responsibility. So who discovers the parallelism? If it's not the programmer using a pattern-based approach or a classical approach of try and, try and test uh, different parallel implementations, who does the discovery of parallelism here? Who implements, generates the parallel code for us? It's only one piece of software that can do this, the OpenACC compiler, okay? The OpenACC compiler, as any other, any compiler, have capabilities to discover parallelism in real code. The main problem, the main limitation is that they use the classical approach of dependence analysis and data flow analysis that is used in compiler theory, something that comes from the 70s, so 30 years ago. And essentially, this classical technology doesn't work, doesn't discover parallelism effectively in real applications. When you have loops with procedure calls, with structs of pointers, with potential aliasing and aliasing to their arguments that are in the invocation of a given routine, control flow, all of these things that we use in every single code, defeats makes the classical dependence analysis and data flow analysis ineffective. It doesn't work to discover parallelism, okay? But again, if that technology somehow improved, then kernels would be a way for us to get rid of the responsibility of finding and discovering the parallelism and implementing the parallel version, okay? But the reality is that the state of the art today, the compilers cannot, are not very effective at discovering parallelism in real codes, okay? Indeed, in the LULES MK example that we have in the practical, you, will, you can check kernels and you will see that no compiler can discover parallelism that parallel web technology can discover because we are using a completely different way of discovering parallelism, okay? It's the IP of the Pentra of the company that we, that we have incorporated five years ago. So, but anyway, it's important to know that this exists so that at some point you can even try and test the difference in performance between parallel pragma using the pattern-based approach and kernels to see how far can a compiler get and make this job for us, okay? Indeed, some of the practicals we propose in can explore this part of comparing the performance that you get with parallel and with kernel directives, okay? So it's good that you know how to use, that it, this, it exists at least. The syntax, very easy. Pragma ECC directive kernels with some additional clauses. Okay, and this is the discussion between kernels or parallel. This is more or less what I have just said at this moment. Okay, next. We have already seen loop and for work sharing. If we don't specify a work sharing, 
then our loop iterations are being replicated in each of the threads. 10 iterations, one thread, 10 iterations in the execution. 10 iterations, two thread, 10 plus 10. Each thread executing 10. 20 threads, 20 threads multiplied by 20 iterations. But we don't want replication of our code when we go to parallel execution. We want to divide the workload among the threads, not to multiply the workload by the number of threads. Okay? So work sharing is essential to specify parallelism okay? and to really have a parallel version. So here I would just add that in Fortran, instead of the keyword for, you have the typical Fortran syntax of the do keyword. Okay? So for, loop, do, loop. These are the keywords that you use for the directives in C, C++ and Fortran, in OpenMP and OpenACC. Okay, three levels of parallelism. Work sharing on the CPU is uh, simple to understand. I mean, one thread begins the execution, I find a parallel region, I create 10 threads, I have 50 iterations, so 50 iterations between 10 threads, each thread is allocated, is assigned five iterations. And all of the threads can communicate and synchronize with all of, the, all of the threads. So the execution model of the multi-threaded CPU is simple to use, okay? But that is not the case of the GPU. Remember when we began this morning that we said that the GPU have a complex memory design so that you have a hierarchy of memories. In the CPU, you have the main memory and the cache. In the GPU, you have the main memory, the, sh the shared memory, the cache, the scratch pads, different types of memory. And not all threads can access to all of the memories. That's the main difference with the multi-threaded CPU. So there are restrictions that are imposed by the hardware. So how do we, as programmers, can lead with this complexity? OK, OpenMP and OpenACC provide a way to handle this. That is, when you do work sharing, you can specify work sharing at three levels. Let's call it, generically, coarse grain, fine grain, SIMD vector. Coarse grain means that uh, when all the threads are created, imagine 100 threads, these threads are grouped by groups. Imagine that the groups are of 50, so two groups of 50. What this means is that each group has a representative thread that can communicate with the representative of the other group, but not with the other threads of the other group. Okay, so this, each of these gang threads can communicate with its workers using OpenACC terminology and can communicate with other gangs, <coughs> but not with workers of other gangs. Okay, so the GPU execution model and the OpenACC an OpenMP execution model for GPU uh, provide this functionality to somehow simplify the control of the, how the threads are grouped on the GPU automatically by the hardware. Okay? So in OpenACC, we have a clause that is called gang. What gang means is that when you specify a reduction, you can say, I want to make a reduction at the gang level. What this means is that all the gangs of each of the groups will collaborate, will communicate with each other to make the reduction of all the local partial result computed in each of the gangs. So you can do a reduction between gangs. If you specify a reduction at the worker level, you will not get the correct result that you expect. Why? Because at the worker level, you will have workers within this gang making a reduction. Workers within this gang making a reduction, but the gangs will not communicate to make the final reduction. So with you, you will not be guaranteeing atomicity and mutual exclusion to make the reduction correctly, okay? So even these levels of parallelism that are usually used to increase, optimize the performance of your application on the GPU can even lead to incorrect code that produces incorrect numerical results. For instance, using reduction operations. Reduction operations are defined in OpenACC to work only at the gang level not at the worker level, not at the vector level. In OpenMP, we have an equivalent. We have, again, three levels. So the gang level is specified by the teams distributed. 
the worker level is specified by the parallel form. Okay? And the additional level is usually Cindio vector. So within all of this, the threads are somehow tied to each other so that all of them are using different lanes of the vector hardware. So this happens on the GPU using vector. And this also happens on the CPU if you take multiple threads and you vectorize some inner loops within the multi-threaded code. Okay? So the importance of the three levels of parallelism for the GPU, again, just to summarize, you need to remember that this exists. You need to remember that when you are doing, for instance, reduction operations, you can only make reductions at the gang level. If you do it at lower levels, the result will not be as expected because all the threads cannot communicate with the rest of the threads. The result will be incorrect. Okay? So this has impact in performance, but more important, even on correctness. So we need to be aware of this. Any questions about this? Just be aware of this when, we, when you do the practical, okay? Atomic, we have already seen atomic. So we have atomic available for C, C++ in OpenMP, and we also have atomic available for C, C++ and Fortran in OpenACC. So the parallel loop with atomic protection to implement reductions, we can use that strategy to make execution in parallel of reduction operations in the GPU. And atomic operations in the GPU are extremely effective. There is a great improvement in the hardware support. So some years ago, they were very costly. You cannot expect a, a, a good performance increase. Right now, the atomic operations of the GPU are really highly optimized. So you it's something that we can use to use to create parallel code on the GPU using atomic protection. Okay? So you can do it and you can play with it in the parallel work trainer tool. Target and data. We have already seen this. Remember that when you go to the GPU, remember the GPU execution model of loading, host driven. The host starts, at some point it decides that part of the code is offloaded to the GPU. The code to be executed is sent, but we all need to also send the data that is needed to make the computations. This is what we do with data in OpenACC, with target data in OpenMP. And then we need to do ways to control what data is transferred from the CPU memory to the GPU memory. This is copying in OpenACC, map to in OpenMP. To copy data, once a result is computed on the GPU, transfer back those data to the CPU so that we can see the output. Remember that the execution is host driven. So copy out or map from. And there is some data that you would probably want to copy in and out for some reason in your application. So copy or map to from. Okay? And you can see Paragraph Trainer generates copy in, copy out, copy and map clauses for you to handle data, data scoping. Okay, I think that this is, this is almost the end. So, but it's also an important part. Array shaping. Um, imagine that you have an array of one million elements. And you have a loop that processes 1,000 elements. You want to offload those computations to the GPU. Could you transfer the one million elements to the GPU? No, you would want to transfer only the, the region of the code, of the array, that is really used during the computation. So you need to specify somehow that from an array of one million elements, only these 1,000 elements that start here and end here is what needs to be transferred to the CPU, from the CPU memory to the GPU memory, okay? This is what we call array shaping. So we have array shaping from, for 1D arrays, 2D arrays, 3D arrays, multidimensional arrays. And the way we specify it is using the same syntax that we use to allocate arrays st in statically in memory. In C, we can create flow at x uh, bracket 1000 end bracket. And this statically allocates an array in memory. In Fortran, you can create also arrays using, I think it is the parenthesis notation, okay? So essentially it, it is the same notation and you specify where the elements start and how many elements you want to transfer. Okay? And this is essential to minimize the data transfers from the CPU to the GPU and back from the GPU to the CPU. 
So at some point, in the data transfer, in the data closest directives, you will need to specify here what arrays you want to transfer and what shapes of the arrays, what re sub-regions of the arrays you want to transfer to from or to from the GPU. Okay? Finally, uh, only two slides remaining. Remember that we say that if we want to learn how to parallelize real code, your code has loops that call routines. Your code has loops that call routines. If we cannot parallelize a loop that contains a root call to a routine, we are in trouble. Okay? So we need somehow a directive where we can mark what routines need to be executed on the GPU. Remember that when you compile code for the CPU, the binary code runs on the CPU architecture. But the GPU has a different architecture. So we need to compile a different version, binary code, of that routine to be run on the GPU hardware. So how do we specify this in OpenMP and OpenACC? If my loop, as you will address in the LULSMK practical, calls functions, I need to say this function and this function will be offloaded to the GPU. Please, compiler, generate a CPU binary, a, a binary version to be executed on the CPU and also another binary to be executed on the GPU. And invoke them as you need when the code is offloaded or when the code is executed on the CPU. So this is what routine does in OpenACC. And this is what declare target does in OpenMP. So if you have a fully parallel loop, imagine that this is a fully parallel loop, so a parallel for all, you need to specify that foo will be offloaded so that the, gen the binary is generated for the GPU. So in the declaration of the, of the function, before the signature, you add pragma ACC, routine, and here you have several modifiers. We will use sec only for this practical. And with this, you guarantee that the, the compiler will generate a version of foo that will run on the GPU whenever it is needed to, get to offload this loop. Okay? Some things that people usually do is they inline the routine. What this means is that instead of using routine sec, you take all the value of the routine and you replace the call with the body of the function. You can do this. Yes, you can. Do you avoid the call to the routine? Yes, you avoid it. But you make your code less structured. You are going against writing a structured, well-structured code that makes your code maintainable. So it's better practice to use this instead of inlining the routine where it is called. Okay? You will have to play with this in the Lules MK practical. And finally, uh, those of you that work with C and C++, you know restrict and const. They are not explicitly needed sometimes to generate uh, parallel versions or parallel code. But some compilers may request that some of the arguments that you have, for instance, in the signature of a function, when they are pointers, that you explicitly mark those pointers as pointers that cannot alias one another. They cannot overlap in the regions of memory of re regions of memory that they, you can access by the references, the reference in that pointer. Okay? So those of you that are familiar with pointers with C and C++, you will probably find this restrict and const useful. In Fortran, you usually don't address these issues because Fortran, by default, you allocate arrays and they are located in separate memory regions that cannot overlap. And, uh, and apart from that, when you use pointers, you have a restricted implementation of pointers that is not as powerful as the C1. But again, this makes programming easier and writing compilers easier in some sense. Okay? So this is essentially something that you will probably need for C and C++ real codes. Okay, so uh, we have omitted this practical of HIT for this course here, but I think you have the example of HIT in the in the, in the participants' materials that Helen has shared with all of you. So again, HIT has some combination of patterns, of loops, so you can play with all of the patterns that you have seen here. But for the after lunch, we recommend, instead of using the, making the LULESH, the HIT practical, that you really go into the complexity of the LULESH NK practical. So we can help you to understand the complexity of paralyzing real code and how the composition in components 
and the composition in patterns can really help you to understand how to paralyze real codes, even if it is the first time that you see the code. You don't need to understand the science behind the code. You need to find properties in the code, and these properties are remarked, captured by the patterns themselves. So that's what you really need to change in your mindset. Okay?